which then brings me neatly on to the topic at hand i want to speak about a little bit more in detail or in depth a little bit was travis decision to sit down with for a face-to-face interview with Charlemagne the god one third of the breakfast club and it was pretty bad pretty bad um not so much for what he said because there's only so much he can say with the court case looming over his head and i'm sure he was advised by the lawyers to avoid certain things so again no nothing to really complain about in that regard but with that being said why speak to the media if you're going to speak to the media and if you want to kind of try to rewrite the narrative or try to present yourself as some being something more than what people already see someone callous someone devoid of emotion somebody um selfish um somebody um that put their fans in danger all those things that people think of you you need to have an interview where you're able to be honest and upfront to an extent right where people can see a different side of you and they can maybe see you know what maybe he's not as bad or as evil as we thought he was going to be but in terms of it trying to convince people who already think it's all his fault it did nothing to change that in order to convince people who are in the middle sit on the fence not too sure how to make their mind up it didn't convince anything to the families who are still grieving or for the loss of their young relatives or family members friends it did nothing to bring closure it did nothing to kind of heal the pain or soothe it which it wasn't going to do anyway but it did nothing in terms of doing that and for him as well in terms of presenting himself as being human (laughs) in that regard it did nothing either because you know i can count on one hand the amount of travis scott interviews i've actually watched because they're quite hard to watch right kind of similar to like um again i'm not kind of denigrating the guy but it kind of it kind of reminds me of trying to get through famous dex interview he's clearly got issues plus it's compounded famous Dex specifically he's clearly got issues plus it's compounded by his crazy drug uses so it, it kind of doesn't make for the best interviews right he kind of just comes across slurring he doesn't really know where he is it's just a shocker and Travis has obviously got some form of social anxiety, right? Something that he doesn't really like to be in front of cameras when he's not performing, which is like sort of a common thing I've heard amongst um, entertainers and artists and whatnot. Sometimes, you know, when they're away from the stage, they just want to be incognito. They don't want to be seen. They're a completely different person to when they're off stage and on stage. And you can see that from Travis Scott's personality, which is probably the reason why he's avoided any sort of like proper long form interview outside of whatever stuff that he can do to maybe promote some merch stuff or stuff that's very controlled very scripted not scripted but you know very controlled in a way that it's kind of done but in terms of just sitting down shooting a shit podcast style um and talking about a very heavy topic um something that he probably still trying hard to process this was such a terrible idea like legitimately a terrible idea and um it kind of solidifies this feeling that i've always had in my head that largely or in large part i think most celebrities or most entertainers especially the ones on the upper echelon the ones in like the tier a right i always break things down in like a tiers let's say a b c d right and in each tier i would say there's three sub tiers and in any work walk of life especially entertainment and if you occupy the top 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 tier i have always thought to myself that most of the people that they have around them excluding friends and family are not there to help them they're there to just kind of protect their own careers or boost their own careers they're not actually looking for the best interest of quote-unquote decline they're looking for the best interest of themselves that's what i've always kind of had that sort of inkling and feeling and i think again this is a horrible analogy a horrible example but one of the things that kind of drums it home to me is why a tv series like succession is so good succession is so good because it presents an unabashed unashamed raw kind of view on what it is on what it kind of looks like and what people sound like on the inside of these big corporations that do like a social faux pas right that kind of um get on the wrong side of history or they're at the center of a crazy storm some sort of sexual or allegation racism thing whatever homophobia whatever right they're at the center of something and again in for us the public we're on twitter threads and we're complaining about stuff we we see it through one reality but in the actual buildings where these things are taking place no one actually cares about how this is hurting people's feelings or how many people are kind of disenfranchised with the brand all this sort no, no one cares about all that fiery stuff if anything they're all just trying to make sure that they can get their mortgage paid on time but they still have the possibility to go to those really sunny luxury resorts that they're going to every summer and to make sure that they're you know getting ferried around in really expensive cars and whatnot and you know hopping on private planes that's what they're in it for they're just protecting themselves and succession is a good example because they're all 
supposed to be working for a family business you'd imagine there'd be a little bit more sort of um love between all of them but if anything they would happily stab each other in the back in the face the belly button in the eye the armpit they don't care they don't care about anyone apart from protecting themselves and i think what you're seeing with this interview is clearly the people around travis who are advising him or again i think the story came out that said travis scott actually went to do this interview or whatever you believe but i still think the people around him clearly don't want what's best for him they clearly just want to make sure they protect themselves they want to make sure they can you know afford a down payment on their house as due all this sort of stuff that's basically tied to him because again he's such a big star that he's essentially paying for people he's essentially providing people the lifestyle they would never have if he didn't exist and again they could say also he wouldn't be the artist that he was if they didn't exist but for the most part the talent is the rare commodity right not a lot of travis scott's come around so when these people in the entertainment industry see him and see how brand friendly he is and the ability to kind of essentially just double triple his album sales every no basically increase his album sales every time he kind of drops over the period of his kind of career um and just basically and reinvent himself the, the the kind of relationship he's got obviously with kylie there's so, so many things that would make those people kind of eyes you know light up green with envy right and so see a dollar sign so it's no surprise that those same people would advise him to kind of go in this interview in the hope of trying to rewrite the narrative which he didn't and on the side of the breakfast club beside the charlemagne thing the other thing where it doesn't look good as well for travis is that of all the interviews that he has done or the interviews that he's kind of done over the years you don't really see him if ever on those kind of platforms at the breakfast club hot 97 i think he's got a couple on there to be fair because i think he's got a good relationship with peter rosenberg on there but he basically for the most part avoids posting or being aligned with some of these kind of you would quote quote unquote ratchet stations right he just avoids them which is understandable as well because I've, i think i mentioned in another podcast before how i get why some of these um newer artists wouldn't want to go on a breakfast club because it's a messy show in it right you're not going to get messy questions from Zane Lowe you're not going to get messy questions from Pitchfork Vader or yeah or Rolling Stones or what did you have publications they're not going to give you messy questions even TMZ probably won't but you know if you go on Charlemagne or you go on sorry the breakfast club and you get interviewed by Angela Yee and uh, what's his name make sure this guy in Charlemagne right they're for sure going to ask you some random thing about some baby mother that you don't really speak to too tough something happening in your hood with some whatever gang they're going to ask you the most messiest questions and you don't want that you want to be talking about your art you don't want to be put in a position where you're made to look uncomfortable you need to look unprepared you're put you know kind of like taking off your square whatever no one wants that so i understand why they don't go on the stations but you then can't turn around when you're in the moments of need and you're grasping for air and you're drowning then suddenly try and you know get the hand of a black station to try and rehabilitate your image when you didn't care about them to begin with so if I was a breakfast cup people, I'd feel a little bit used. Of course they wouldn't because they only care about the views and numbers. Because ultimately that's what they're in the business for. Clicks, listens, all that stuff. I understand. But you'd feel a little bit used that this guy didn't give you any looks, any kind of cosign and care about you as all. And then now he needs help. He's trying to come and suck at the teat of the black mother, right? Or, you know, you know what I mean, right? In that regard, he's trying to invent it. And this ain't going to work either because... I don't know i've never really thought of travis scott's audience as black or white it's just kids in it so these are not the people who he needs to he needs to convince he needs to convince the everyday average kind of music consumer the kind of person that's happy to take their kid to a travis scott concert and wait in a car park you know what i mean that kind of person they're not listening to breakfast club they're just regular adults trying to make sure they can get their kid the flipping travis scott jordan ones or whatnot right so he needs to convince those people and i think these interviews don't do anything to convince anybody in my opinion they're just a bit self-serving it's like you know look at me i'm sad look at me i'm going through stuff um again it's obviously self-serving for the people around him we're also trying to protect their um salaries trying to protect their futures trying to make sure their kids can go to private school next term because again i'd imagine private schools you don't pay by the year you don't pay by the year you pay by the term either way you pay so that that is due very soon so it's no surprise that suddenly he gets wheeled out now to kind of sit there in front of the cameras and do this. And I just think, given the nature and severity of the issue, given the amount of kids that legitimately pass away, given the untold pain it's caused people, given all the unanswered questions, this just isn't the time or the place to sit down in this interview. Because you can't be honest, of course, with the court case over your head. And he just isn't a guy for it. He doesn't have charisma. He doesn't have that much of a personality which is probably why he's avoided these interviews in the first place. But you need those sort of things to kind of curry the favor of the public. It doesn't really matter what the public think anyway. 
because it's all going to go to court. So, you know, he's going to get his day in court in that regard. But in the court of public opinion currently, he doesn't have the minerals to be able to kind of rewrite that narrative. So I just think it was a complete waste of time. If anything, it probably did, did more damage than good. And eventually this is probably going to be something that's going to be used against him. You know what I mean? That's the kind of unfortunate side of it. But as I've said before, I still think two years at minimum before he's ever has the ability to go up on stage, let alone live recently shit and again the thing that made him a superhero or the thing that made him so incredible amongst his peers was the fact that he's so bland as a person that he can just or as a person not as an artist as a person that he is he's incredibly brand friendly but then on the, on the other side of things when things go wrong it's easy to drop because he's so empty and there's nothing there and that i guess is something that he's probably going to have to look at when he does come out of it the other side eventually he will end up to um if that was me personally i would say i think i said it before and something like that happened, a tragedy where kids are like that passed away and my entire image was tied on me caring about the kids and shit, I would have just retired. I would have just retired and just tried to kind of um, pivot my career into maybe being a helpless, sorry, being um, selfless and setting up charities and, I don't know, maybe opening a recording studio for the new generation. I don't know, doing something that kind of didn't mean I was the centre of the attention on stage and shit. Because I just wouldn't feel comfortable getting up on stage again and trying to corral interest and love for fans who i clearly didn't have their best interests at heart and that last incident you know i mean that's what i would have done i would just retired but you know you can't tell people what to do in their career it's a short one um it's a mistake you know obviously i'm sure he didn't mean what well, yeah, i'm sure he didn't intend for those kids to pass away for sure so everyone should have a road back to redemption this is his but i just think this was an unnecessary step he didn't need to do this. he didn't need to do this but you know Maybe I'm in a minority when it comes to that one. 